Hello and welcome to Digital and Data YouTube channel. Today we are going to be creating an algorithm that cluster um, an original data set into um, a group of data sets and, and um, store that in a different folder. So first of all, what we want to do today is to take an original data set in form in form of in form of this original folder then cluster them and um, save them in a different folder name cluster data one cluster data two cluster data three and cluster data four using k means algorithm so how do you do that um if you've not subscribed to this channel um, click the subscribe button and hit the notification bell and also give me a comment below if there's any other topic you want me to cover on this channel thank you for joining us and let's see the implementation techniques um, using our code all right um, to do this we start by importing the relevant libraries from python and first of all we import numpy pandas tensorflow and every other dependency we need one of the most important libraries we need here is k means algorithm and although i imported silhouette score here but we won't necessarily need it here because oh, we, we will need it here we need it to um, try and see the number of clusters we are trying to get and how do we measure the effectiveness of those clusters or those of those clusters and those are the other ones we need at the moment then i've have my i have my image folder in a directory uh, to show you the directory i have a directory here this is a directory for my folder i have the images or uh, the data here um, the data are all stored here and we want to what we want to do is to cluster similar files or similar data into each cluster for example we have t-shirts here we're going to cluster t-shirt into t-shirt folder uh, then we have bags we are going to cluster bags into a bag folder and also we have shoes where which we are going to cluster into shoes folder so i have my image here and um, i'm running the code from my directory where i have the where i have the image um, stored so to continue we i first of all import the directory here so the directory has been imported import your directory here and then uh, you the next thing to do is to create a file path with the correct separator for the current OS uh, because we have a JPEG file uh, I just put this as um, just input the directory and put the JPEG so that you can um, visualize what you have uh, I use globe here to locate all files in the directory using um, globe.tem globe uh, using globe.globe globe here to now uh, put the globe directory and then I Print the number of files we have in our list. We have about 44,000 data sets in this uh, folder. Um, to save us time, we are just going to use a little bit of the fold, a little bit of the data set. So we select the first 1,000 element from the from our data set. Um, you can select the whole image if you want, uh, but for the sake of this video, we are only selecting about 1,000 data from the folder. So the, we read and um, resize the images from the selected files using CV2 and put that into a NumPy array. And um, so once we put that into a NumPy array, we normalize the image by dividing with 245. It's just um, a way of normalizing our image. And then uh, we print the image shape here to see exactly how our image looks like. As you can see here, we have 1,000 image. 
which we've saved in our 120 by 128 file format which is what um, we are trying to resize in the image to so to that's what we've done here okay next thing is to generate embeddings for the image using image net to capture especially the visual characteristics in a low dimensional state so that's why we are using image net um, image net uh, or image net is a pre-trained model which you can use to generate embeddings you can read that more about that uh, later under the keras um, so we load the mobile net here to pre-train on image net and then we use that to get the image embeddings using uh, the model you've already created so once we generate embeddings uh, our embeddings here and uh, we print that out print the shape of the embeddings we can see that we are our embeddings is now um 1000 size of the number of data set we have and the the embedding dimension is right here so in order to create um in order to know the number of folders or the number of clusters we want to create we need to use um silhouette score um silhouette score is what you will give you an optimal number of uh k versus the silhouette score so once the silhouette score is higher that means this that's the optimal level of the number of k you want to select so um it's just a way for us to see the number of uh, clusters to generate especially if you don't know the number of uh, categories you have in your data set here i don't know i don't have any idea the number of um, categories we have so plotting silhouette score we allow us to know the number of categories we have in our data set and then we can select that to use that as the optimal value of k so here we put an empty list into the number of k and then uh, we sell uh, we we create a variable that range that gives the value of k a range from 2 to 11 because uh we just think i just think right now that we don't need to have more than less than two or more than 11 number of categories in our data set this is just a guess you can use as much number of range as possible just for you to show how what's the number what's the optimal value of k you're going to get so and then we created a for loop here i created a for loop here for for k in k values uh k means equals select the number of clusters which is k and the random state of zero and then you fit your embeddings you generated earlier and then you calculate the cilia score which is going to give you the embeddings and the k means dot labels that which you already done here and then you append the cilia score into your list right here so in order to visualize what we have you plot the i you need to next then plot the silhouette score against the value of k you need to plot the value uh, to, to plot that this is what we just do here and uh, do evolve the value of k which is our range and then against the silhouette score which is what we've calculated here so and then we put the y label to be able to showcase showcase our silhouette score and the x label is the value of k and um, all these other ones are not really that important or if you want to show that you can specify the plot title so um, given visualizing our serial score and our optimal value of k uh, from this we realize this this is what you can get from here from based on what we've calculated above the serial score and the value of k according to this figure now our optimal value of k is around 5 which will give us a higher silhouette score than the other values but one thing to also need to note here is between the lower silhouette score and the higher silhouette score the value is not really far apart so you can choose any value you want but here i tend to choose the value of six as the optimal value no i, I tend to choose up to five 
as the number of optimal number of clusters because that's that gives us the highest silhouette score which will give us the optimal accuracy for our k-means so then we fit the model to the image embeddings this is what you need to do next um, fit k-means and put the number of clusters that you've generated from your silhouette score and then verbose to be zero and the random state of 32 you can play around with the hyperparameters here to see which one is much more which one you want you can change the random states if you are not really happy with your results and also you can get rid of Fabos if you don't need that and then fit your k-means into your embeddings which you've generated earlier so and uh, then we now make you can then make predictions using the fitted model here so after you make make the prediction the next thing to do is to save the cluster into a different folder which is our goal so we create a for loop which we look into all our images and um, select based on the number of clusters and make that into a directory this is what make directory um, library is doing for us then copy images into the corresponding cluster directory and create a path for them this is what we've done here we use a function called shuttle to do that so just to plot the number of clusters the number of to plot the cluster result to see how well it performed you can create a figure with the k rows at least the number of clusters you have and also the number of columns so, so you can just play around with this and then loop over each cluster which the parts you've already created which is here the number of cluster parts and show each file in each cluster so this is what we get we get um dresses in one cluster bags in one cluster and in, in a different folder and then we have t-shirts in another folder wristwatches this is female wristwatches and male wristwatches in a different folder and we have shoes in another folder so we have uh we have created um we have created an algorithm that will allow us to cluster a single folder into the different level of clusters and save that into a different folder so that we can use that later as the case may be i hope this will be able to help if you like this video and you or you want to give us going to give me want to give us feedback on this kind of video you can leave a comment below like and subscribe to this channel and thank you for listening see you in the next video